Let's talk about that stunning upset in the Florida, Florida gubernatorial race. Uh, Tallahassee Mayor Andrew Gillum, uh, Bernie Sanders backed progressive, outspent by millions, won the Democratic nomination. He is the first black candidate to do so on a major party ticket in Florida. In November, he will face Congressman Ron DeSantis, whose campaign surged after President Trump endorsed him. And what began as a conversation about polarization, uh, extremes here between progressives and Trump Republicans, is now morphing into a conversation about race after DeSantis appeared on Fox News just hours after his victory and said this. He is an articulate spokesman for those far left views, and he's a charismatic candidate. And, you know, I watched those Democrat debates. None of that was, was my cup of tea. But, I mean, he performed better than the other people there. So, so we've got to work hard to make sure that we continue Florida going in a good direction. Let's build off the success we've had on Governor Scott. The last thing we need to do is to monkey this up by trying to embrace a socialist agenda with huge tax increases and bankrupting the state. Monkey this out. That's what folks are jumping on. So the Florida Democratic Party responding with this. It is disgusting that Ron DeSantis is launching his general election campaign with racist dog whistles. The DeSantis campaign firing back. Ron DeSantis was obviously talking about Florida, not making the wrong decision to embrace the socialist policies that Andrew Gillum espouses. To characterize it as anything else is absurd. So let's go there. Two CNN political commentators, Angela Rye, a board member with the Congressional Black Caucus Institute. Uh, she has known Gillum for 13 years, has been campaigning for him this week uh, in Florida. And Ben Ferguson is with us, a conservative host uh, of the Ben Ferguson Show. So welcome to both of y'all. And, and Angela, first, first to you, since you know Andrew uh, Gillum, but, but hearing DeSantis' soundbite, monkey this up. What did you hear? Let me start with a positive first. Um, Brooke, this is an exhilarating moment for me um, to watch my friend who has spent his entire career um, in public service, going from the SGA president at Florida A&M University to then becoming a Tallahassee City Commissioner, the youngest in history, to now serving as the mayor. Three kids, Davis is right there in that picture. Um, a phenomenal guy who doesn't just perform well, Brooke, who isn't just articulate, but he's brilliant and he has a body of work to stand on that demonstrates that. What is so unfortunate about what Congressman DeSantis did is he started his campaign the same way Donald Trump did, right? He started by trafficking in racism and otherizing Andrew, who is true to the form all the way down to the toes of Floridian. So he could have just said, you know, I can't wait for, to have this competition to talk about policy, to battle on what we think is fair. He says that he's from a blue collar family, then he should support $15, $15 an hour minimum wage. He should be on the same side of many of these issues that are not partisan at all far from socialist. And it's so funny because the all of the rhetoric today is talking about this upset. Nobody's upset except for the folks who polled the wrong people. This isn't surprising to us. Andrew has been doing this work. And I would just say to Ron DeSantis, shame on you. If you don't understand the history in this country, with not even in this country, throughout the world, with putting black people in the same vein as monkeys, it's a problem. H&M lost a ton of business. Maybe he should be H&M's new spokesperson because they lost a ton of business by having a little black boy wearing a hoodie that says monkey in the jungle or whatever it said in January, right? Like we have to get to a point where this type of rhetoric is not acceptable and we call it for what it is. It's not a dog whistle. It's actually a foghorn. Ben, uh, again, Congressman DeSantis's team saying to characterize it as anything else is absurd. How do you see it? Look, there's two things here. One, I, I would say first off to the Democrat, congratulations on what is history. I mean, seeing a young person, uh, me being younger, both of us, Angel and I both being younger, seeing someone be able to pull this off, being mm -hmm. outspent is an incredible thing to see. Forget politics for a second. Mm -hmm. So I would first say congratulations on that. Second thing here for the congressman, I don't think listening to the, what he said in general that that was meant as a dog whistle. However, when you do misspeak or you say something like this, and clearly there are people that are offended, it is real simple how to handle this. You come out and you apologize and you say you are sorry. 
and you move on from it as quickly as possible. This is one of those moments where you can say, you know what, I should have used a different word. I apologize. It was not about race when I said it, but mm -hmm. I want to apologize. Now let's move on to the general election. Let's have a grand debate. Let's mm -hmm. have a grand conversation with the citizens of Florida. And mm -hmm. that's how I think it should handle. And unfortunately now in politics, and I think this is a learning moment for, for many candidates and, and for the midterms coming up. We have both sides now have become so obsessed with never backing down from a moment and, and backing down somehow shows weakness. No, it also can show strength when you realize that when there's a misstep in a campaign and there will mm -hmm. always be missteps, there will mm -hmm. always be things that you say that you need to apologize for. There are moments when you need to apologize and that's what needs to happen from the congressman. Mm. Brooke, can so, I just say one thing? Go ahead. Ben. Do you know if we were in the same studio, I would give you a hug today? Like, that's rare. We <laughs> never. Rarely like, we, yeah. No, but seriously. Yeah. But today, yeah. seriously, Ben, in, in real life, like, I am so glad you said that. And I want you to know, like, yesterday to us felt like it was just a new day. And I really mm. hope that what you're saying, we just continue down this path of just, okay, maybe he didn't mean it that way. If he did, yeah. let me tell you all of the treacherous history he kind of stepped upon. But yeah. it is so huge of you to say that. And I thank you for being honest and not defending well, that we, nonsense. We, you know, one of the things that I think we've just, in this country, we have to really take a step back. And candidates need to understand this. It is okay to admit that you said something that wasn't correct. It is okay to say you're sorry. It is okay to say you're sorry yeah. if you offend someone. And, and we We've become so polarized that, that when I talk to candidates now, I'm saying, look, understand that when you have a microphone in front of you 20 hours a day during a campaign, you're going to you're say screw something up. But it incorrectly. It was the first day. It is the first well, day. Well, it's yeah. not a good way to start. Speaking of uh, people who are good at mea culpas, let's talk about the president. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> president Trump, guys, not a segue. Uh, he weighed in a failed socialist mayor named Andrew Gillum, who has allowed crime and many other problems to flourish in his city. So, so adding to this notion of governing by fear. Mm -hmm. Moving away from Florida, let me, let me get to this. The president also uh, was with this group of evangelicals yesterday, and he said, people say I'm not voting because the president doesn't like Congress. It's not a question of like or dislike. It's a question that they will overturn everything, they being the Democrats, overturn everything that we've done, and they will do it quickly and violently and violently. There is violence. So, uh, Ben, to you, you know, the, the White House spokesperson declined to comment on exactly what the president meant by that. But isn't that, that, that the notion of violence? That is mighty dangerous language. I, I, see, I, I, when, I, when I originally saw that, what I thought was there is going to be a violent takeover with legislation in Washington against the things that we fought so hard for. I, I don't think it is meant in a literal way of actual violence that is going to be out there. I think you can have one side that comes in and immediately, and it's the same thing that, that Democrats that accuse not, hang Trump on, of. i got to stop you because it's not, not yeah. part of a pattern that the both sides in the wake of Charlottesville, you know, spring of 16, mm -hmm when he wanted to become the nominee, and if he, he didn't become the nominee, he said there'd, there'd be riots in the streets. It's not yeah. like a one-off. Well, it I, seems to be a pattern. Well, well he I, also I, said if he shot someone on Fifth Avenue, like he's trafficked in violence too. So, Ben, we were at this new day at the beginning of the segment, and we didn't already <laughs> lo we lost each other already. But you, I think I, the other issue that you have to deal with, right, is, Brooke, in this tweet about Andrew, he doesn't mention Andrew. He loves to attack black people on Twitter, especially black men. He hit Don, he hit LeBron, now Andrew, who he's frightened by, and he traffics in, in the crime-ridden streets of Tallahassee. What? Has he ever been to Tallahassee? Maybe if he left the golf course in Florida, in southern Florida, he would see. Ouch. Like, Ouch. what is he talking no, hold on, about? Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. He's too busy it's vacationing. Statistically, statistically Go ahead, when, close the this out. when the president talks about crime, and, and let's also be clear, it's not just he loves, and this is the part where I say, let's take a bigger look at this. The president attacks a lot of people that are white and also Republican. And if you don't believe me, look at the debate we've been having about John McCain. Yes, this there are numbers week. on this. So, there are so, numbers, so let's ben. not, let's not act like this president, this president is an equal opportunity offender no, no, against no. people that he disagrees with, regardless of their par political party, regardless of their race. So I, I don't it's think it has anything to do with race. I think it's a good talking point, but I don't think it's reality. No, no, no. All All right. there, there are numbers that go. CNN pulls. They're, like, look at the numbers. It's disproportionately, he disproportionately attacks black people. This disproportionately. I, Those I are the believe facts. it. We'll leave it. I felt the kumbaya in the beginning. I appreciated the discourse, <laughs> and then we went this way, but that's all good. That's what we, what, go why we wanted the two the of you beginning. on. Ben and Angela, thank you so much. Thank Truly. you.